thank you for saving me. I am just too excited. I woke up so stirred up. I'm not a morning person. That's the leftover joy from last night. Do we have an awesome time last yes. night? Yes. I first like to thank um, God first and give him honor for today and for our lives and for saving us and for this lectureship and for the success of the lectureship and for everyone that has worked for the unity of the spirit. And this is going to be a life-changing lectureship because the theme is unity. Um, I thank uh, Sister Pointer and the Lectureship Committee for trusting me with the word. <coughs> and it is an humbling experience when we share God's word because it's not a toy. It's serious business. And um, even though a lot of you personally know that I am off the hook and a little eccentric and crazy and all that, <laughs> you know that when it comes to God's word, that it's down to business. I thank him for that. After um, I was assigned the topic, keeping the pieces together, mending a broken spirit, I began to have problems. <laughs> all kinds of problems. All of a sudden, unnatural things began to happen. And my temper, and I meditated, and it said, keeping the pieces together. You can't teach what you don't know. You can't lead what where you don't go. And what's the key word for me? Application. <laughs> so I'm telling you that this stuff that I'm sharing works. Then I gave it a title. This is the burden of righteousness. Everyone say it, the burden of righteousness. When God calls you to do something great, who's mad? Nobody's mad but the devil. But guess what? We are soldiers. And soldiers have what? Wounds and scars. Being a singer, part of this will be a song list. My head is bowed and bloody. What? From the work. But it's a good fight. It's a good death. And at the end of the session, you're going to be so glad that you're saved. And whoever has a broken spirit, when you leave here, all will be well. And wrote a poem. And I always remembered it because it came from my heart. And it's my favorite. It's called, I Fallen and I Can't Get Up. Remember the commercial? Well, this one's a little bit more serious, but it goes like this. In a world of confusion, I've been born where faces of illusions are worn that have entrapped me like thistles and thorns where I've fallen and I can't get up. When I looked, I thought I stood, and when I thought I could, I stepped, and I landed in the pit in wickedness so unfit, in pain too deep to even weep where I've fallen. And who's listening to my weeping? And who's listening to my wailing? And who's mending my broken heart from life's venomous starts where I've fallen? And where's the love I thought I knew? Now love is lost and friends are few. But if there be love on wings like a dove, please fly, fly to where I've fallen and I can't get up. And once I wrote that, I released my pain that I felt for them. And I recited over and over because we're living in a world where people are broken. Songwriters write about it. Al Green, one of my favorites. How can you mend a broken heart? How can a loser? La, 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 la. And then Smokey Robinson, the tears of a clown when there's no one around. And Bill Withers, ain't no sunshine when she's gone. <laughs> but God has a better idea about the whole situation. Heavenly sunlight. Yes. Jesus is the light of the world. He is my son, right? And then when you talk about mending a broken spirit, God will wipe away all of our tears. So, you know, God has a way of rearranging our arrangements. And I had the lesson, and I woke up this morning, and he gave me something totally new. 
So this is freshly inspired. I want to keep it simple, because like Sister Pointer said, I could talk all day. I got baptized at the age of nine. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly in the Church of Christ. I could talk all day. But the struggle is just hone it in where you can take it with you and apply it today. Point number one, how are we broken and wounded? Number one, God allows certain things to happen to us. Oh, well, what God allows. You have no control over it, but you can be broken. I saw my father die in front of my eyes at the age of 14. I was very angry and very bitter and so confused. I had nothing to do with that, but I was still broken. Sometimes it takes years to overcome that. But number one, think about Job. What happened to them? I think of Job's wife. Do you think she had a broken spirit? Have you ever lost a child? Were you wounded? Were you broken? If you had 10 children and lost them all in one day, do you think you'd be a little bit broken? The story is in the book for a particular reason. Point number two, we are broken sometimes because of our own choices that we make. And we have to take responsibility for that. Big example, David. He messed up real bad, didn't he? A man after God's own heart, which means that good people do bad things sometimes. Because none of us have our halos and our wings. Did y'all know that? <laughs> it's saved as we are. And the Bible says, take heed when you think you stand, lest you fall. I ain't got no wings and no halo. Do you? But we have to take responsibility. Number three, we are wounded sometimes because of what other people do to us. Sometimes we are abused, deceived, stabbed, hurt. And we're going to talk about forgiveness. And the greatest example in the Bible for that I found was the story of Saul and David. Remember how Saul was hunting David down? What was Saul trying to do to David? Kill him. And what was the problem? Jealousy. And jealousy is cruel as a grave. I'm going to tell you what my grandmother told me. People don't like you. They're jealous of you. Stay away from them. Love them from a distance. They'll kill your spirit. Sister Gadsden said yesterday, put your guard up. You got Bible for that in Proverbs. Guard your spirit. The Bible says he doesn't want any of us to be ignorant. He wants us to be discerning what is good. And it doesn't mean you hate people. But you know, this road to heaven is serious. And when the Bible says lay aside every weight and every sin, some of our influences are just weights. We can barely walk because we got the weight of the world on our shoulders because we think we Jesus and we can save everybody. <laughs> now, I checked with a few friends and people who had personal experiences, testimony number one, of women who were broken. I was raped at the age of seven and 15. All of my life, I've been fighting to stay afloat and be renewed in my spirit. And if you ever dreamed of falling and never landing, how does it feel to have a broken spirit? I've been falling all my life, but I have never, ever landed. That's testimony number one. Testimony number two, living with a broken spirit has placed me in a dark place where I don't feel connected to anyone. Number three, I felt like I was trapped in a desolate place, a place that felt like a deep well that I couldn't climb out of. I felt drained and frustrated all the time. I was embarrassed for being so weak and beaten up by life. I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to read my Bible because I was hurt by what was happening in my life. I didn't have the energy to focus on anything except the pain and hurt that I was feeling. This is a Christian talking. Number four. Watching my father die at a young age felt like a sword had been thrust through my spirit. It was a pain that no one could touch or console. Every day was doom and gloom. Even if the sun was shining, it was not shining for me. These are true stories. People are hurting. What are we doing in the church? I think about Stray Company's song. The hourglass is showing me that time has slipped away. Mixed up people, they're groping aimlessly. They're just trying to find their way. Some of us don't have a care, but we're having lots of fun. We have to care. What we have here, the next lectureship that we have, 
speaking to myself, we need to bring guests that are non-Christians. This love that we have, we don't want to get all we can and then can all we get. We want to share the love. Turn to Romans 8.28. I'm right above Linda yesterday, one between us. And it says, what all things, everyone, all things work together for the good. All things, not some things, all things. Now, all things work together for the good. Let's qualify this, of those who love the Lord. Now, people that don't love the Lord, all things don't work together for them. Let's just read it and understand it. It's conditional. And who are called. Everybody's not called. Everybody that's sitting in the pew is not called. They're not even with us. They're just there. And you wonder, well, why do I have to go to this every Wednesday and every Sunday? Why is such and such doing this? Because the devil is here. This is a Christian journey. It's a fight. This is not heaven. The Church of Christ is not heaven. It's a battleground. Do you have your armor on? Are you a sad soldier? I gotta put on my armor. Oh, here comes a dart. What do you do? You put up your shield, they bring it on. Bring it on. I'm a soldier. I ain't scared. Bring it on. So, the burden of righteousness. I woke up one Thursday morning and friends didn't know me. I ain't scared of nothing and nobody. Never say what you'll never do. Whew, all the things I said I'd never do, I have done. I said I would never move to North Carolina. Here I am. There is a difference between being broken and being wounded. The Bible speaks about a wounded spirit, about a broken spirit as well. Proverbs 17, 22. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up bones. Proverbs 18, 14. The spirit of man can endure sickness, but a broken spirit, who can bear? You know, wounded people are hurting, and a lot of times they fester in their hurt. They're always whining. Ain't nothing right. While well, I'm talking about nothing right, one of the biggest things we complain about is the weather. Real simple. How many of us say, oh, this is just a, I'll give you a testimony. I went to the copy store. A woman looked me dead in my face. Isn't this weather horrible? <laughs> and I said, no. And she jumped. She didn't know what to do. I said, he's in control. It's liquid sunshine. Obviously, we need it. But every day above ground is a good day. I'm just glad I'm here to see the rain. She said, oh my God, I never thought about it like that. <laughs> and so she stood there and we were continuing. She told the girl, I'm scared to say anything because this lady is sitting here and I know she's going to correct me if I say something <laughs> wrong. I said, I am your good luck charm. Got on the elevator the next day. Oh, I just wish this wind would go away. I'm not a morning person. I didn't have a lot of teaching in me at 7.30. <laughs> so I looked at her and I said, Every day above ground is a good day. <laughs> and she said, you know that's right. I said, girl, I know that's right. <laughs> we got work to do. When people complain, that's an opportunity to teach to them in love. And give them your card and teach them some more. So negative people are preoccupied with their past. They can role play it minute for minute. What happened 20 years ago? They never buried the hatchet. Uh, they're always the victim and they always blame other people for what they're responsible for. No wonder the Bible says a wounded spirit who can bear. And this ain't talking about the person that's got the problem. It's talking about the person they dumping on. Who can bear? You know, some people walk in the room and they bring in the sunshine. Other people leave the room in the sun shines. <laughs> God loves a broken spirit, a contrite heart. People that have humility don't seek and demand things. They seek after God. They're teachable. They want to change. They don't like the situation that they're in. They just need help. But a wounded spirit, people that whine, they're difficult to live with. But a, per a person with a broken spirit, 
their joy to be around because they need your love. And God will heal a broken heart. David said, I look to the hills from which cometh my strength, my help comes from the Lord. I'm gonna give you an example. Everyone look up. When you look up, what are y'all focused on? You don't see each other, do you? Okay, we're supposed to look to Christ, look to God. When he says, look up for your strength, when you go outside, not when you're driving, but when you're a passenger, <laughs> look up. Every day, did you know we have new scenery every day? When there are clouds, how the Lord orchestrates and does his artwork. And then when it's a clear sky or a starry night, if you just look up long enough, you'll begin to calm down and you'll forget about your problems, and you'll become one with the universe, and you will realize that there is a God, and he is so awesome. You ever been on a cruise, and you know how small and inferior you feel out in the middle of the ocean, and you realize how great thou art. We need to look up more. So if you can't afford a cruise, there's grass, but everybody can look up. If you can see physically, you can look up. That's where your strength comes from. It comes from the Lord. Well, well, why did this happen to me? Why not you? But you don't understand. Jesus knows. No cross, no crown. If you can't stand disappointment, sometimes. If you can't stand to be talked about, Sometimes, Just remember what he said in his word, how he loves and cares for the little bird. No cross. You can't get no crown. So when we go to heaven, we're going to be tired. Oh, we're going to be so glad. I'm going to be looking for you. You're going to be looking for me. <laughs> if you miss me from singing down here, you can't find me nowhere. Come on up to God's glory. I'll be praising up there, right? And we have to hold on to that because I don't mean to be more, but this could be the last time. I had to bring this like this is the last time. It might be my last time. What would I say if this was my last lesson? Every time we come together as a church, it is an opportunity. Somebody needs, somebody is going through something. Someone's not going to wake up next week. What was the last thing that they heard? If it was you, you're responsible for what they heard. Be careful what we say. Bitterness means you're holding on to something with so much animosity and resentment. Bitterness is described as feelings from something that is difficult to, to accept. Don't carry bitterness. Do you know bitterness and anger brings about disease? Yes. Cancer, diabetes, heart disease. Do you know when we're angry? I learned this in America. When we get really angry, it's enough acid in your blood to kill a pig. So last week I said, you know, I could kill a whole flock. <laughs> myself together because anger works against us and this is the temple and we are responsible for what we think so you know uh, what you hear is very important um, I went to a conference and they had a mood patch to put on and um, if it was negative if you were negative it would be brown to black and if you were really mellow it would be aqua to blue so when I got there it was black because I was stressed running in traffic and everything <laughs> I get there and then I went to a Reiki treatment where they, the transfer of energy, and I just calmed right on down. And then it was aqua. I said, like, oh, I'm just cool as I can be. <laughs> Somebody was talking negative within earshot. I wasn't involved in the conversation. I just heard it. My patch went black. <laughs> the power of what we hear. So forgiveness, I want to y'all already know about that, and I'm going to end on a promise this. Please don't think that we are justified in not forgiving people. I have another testimony, I don't have time to tell. I will tell you this, I got time. My mother was sick and didn't raise me, but I kept in contact with her. I was in my 20s. She had a stroke and her niece was her caretaker. And I went to visit, and I got a letter saying your mother had a stroke. But I said, I'm coming to see my mama. And I had to find her in a nursing home in Alabama. And I spent that day with her. I said, Mom, I want you to come and live with me when you get out of the nursing home. She said, OK. 2004 in Charlotte, selling my books. Stephanie McLaughlin comes to the table. I'm making small talk. Where are you from? I'm from Selma, Alabama. I say, wow, well, really? I got family there. Who? I said, Nellie Moore. She said, 
you know Nellie. I said, Nellie is my first cousin. What? Nellie is my mother's best friend. I have all her phone numbers. I began to cry. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. He knew I wanted to make that thing right. I connected with my cousin and the whole other side of the family. And they said, I was just, Mary, we found Mary Lucille. We'll never lose her again. But God is not slack. The last thing I want to leave you with, if you have a broken heart, you don't have to be afraid. Whatever you're going through, as I told one of my sisters, God knows the end of the story. Whatever you're going through right now, if you can't see his plan, hold up your hand. Hold your hand up. Trust his hand. If you can't see the plan, trust his hand. Repeat after me. This is what God tells us. I will never forsake you. You shall receive the gift of life. Seek and ye shall find. Knock. And the door will be open. And the door will be open. Seek, the of Seek the kingdom of heaven. All these things shall be added unto you. A good man will obtain favor from God. The one who endures to the end, the one who to the end. He, shall be saved. he shall be saved. I want to close with one song, just the words of it. When the Savior calls, I will answer. Your name. We will not be called up as a congregation. Let somebody get caught up on the road. He didn't die for Sugar Creek Road. He didn't die for whatever street you want. He died for the world. At the judgment, there'll be trillions of people since the beginning of time. Individually, we will be somewhere listening. Do you know how scary that is? Think about your moment when you will be listening for your name. I hope to see you there. God bless you. Hey guys, just want to remind you to subscribe to my sister networks, PKT Max, Minute Parables 2.0, Humble is the Way, and the Church TV Network. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share their videos also. All right, talk to you soon.